Josh here, and today we're going to be talking about the shit Loki. So this thing's cheating, right? Like, like if you use this, you're kind of cheating uh, the system a little bit. You're making your system a little bit better than it should be, um, which is not without its benefits. And uh, I feel the same way about EQ. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about this versus using EQ. But before we do that, full disclosure here, shit did lend this to me for a review. They're not paying, asking or otherwise trying to influence what I say anyway, good or bad, like always. Okay, so um, this is a niche product. It's a, certainly a niche product because I feel like most circumstances, it actually is not what I recommend using. And in some, it's definitely what I recommend using. First, a physical tour of the device. So on the front, you have your power on light, and then you have these four knobs. And then above that, you see what looks kind of like a bell curve uh, on the far left of a line, middle left, middle right, and then far right. And then you have a switch on the right side. And what this switch does is actually turns off and turns on the presets that you're using when you actually adjust the knobs. So you can actually bypass the knobs with just the flick of a switch. Now on the back, when we start to see what this thing is gonna be usable with, you have a right and left RCA input, a right and left RCA output, and your power on switch, and your power input. Now the overall build quality is pretty much classic shit. It's, you know, completely made of metal, very solid. Uh, you know, it, it's about what you would expect uh, if you've had a Magni or a Modi. So let's talk about the knobs in the front, and then I will get to kind of where I recommend using this and the circumstances where I recommend using this. So the frequencies that this suggests on a bell curve are 20 Hertz, 400 Hertz, 2000 Hertz, and 8000 Hertz. Now the actual adjustment amount is a little bit odd because on the 20 Hertz knob and the 8000 Hertz knob, uh, it can go plus or minus 12 decibels either way. But on the 400 Hertz and the 2000 Hertz, it can only go plus or minus six dB. So uh, it's not consistent across the board. I'm not quite sure why this is like this, but that's what we're working with here. Okay, so this device as a whole is pretty cool and it can definitely enhance certain systems that have particular circumstances. So what are those circumstances? Uh, right away, if you have a digital system that is run off of a computer, I do not recommend this. I recommend EQ software. It, it is far more specific. Um, you can get certain things like, you know, if you want to match the Harman curve with the piece software or something like that for your specific headphone, you can download presets for that. You can make your own custom presets and you can do it in a far more specific way than this can because this only adjusts kind of four main frequencies and only up to certain limits and, you know, only up to 8K. Whereas, you know, frequency response graphs, you can adjust everywhere in between to pretty much an infinite variable amount. And they can be very, very precise in a way that this cannot. And on top of that, they're free. Now with this, where this is really good is with analog systems or systems that are not necessarily, you know, computer based where you can't download an app with an EQ on it. For example, uh, smart TVs. A lot of those smart TVs do not have equalizer adjustments and the ones that do are very, very poor. And this can offer adjustments that you couldn't otherwise get and may either solve or enhance your system quite a bit. And it can actually, it can actually do quite a bit of magic. Now, again, like with most amplifiers, it's about your circumstances on what you're using it. So you do need your DAC to be independent from your amplifier, or at least be able to run some sort of loop because you do have to do the RCA in and the RCA out to get the effects of this. Now this also could do wonders for something like a vinyl based system where maybe you want to add a little bit more low end or you know, you're listening to old recordings that are maybe a little bit bright and you can bring down that sharpness a little bit. So there are definitely circumstances where I think this would be a, you know, for 140 bucks, a godsend and could uh, turn a relatively cheap system into a very pricey sounding system by just slightly adjusting some features. Now, when I'm listening to this on headphones and being a little bit more critical of the sound quality, all of these knobs start to sound pretty distorted when you turn them to the maximum. Um, if you play within a reasonable realm where you're not completely boosting each or completely taking away any of the frequencies, uh, I think it, it sounds pretty good. Now, one other thing that I think you should consider with this is if you have high-end gear, I don't think I would recommend adding this into your high-end gear. And it is true that it might be able to uh, kind of fix some issues or enhance some features of the system that you have, but you're also introducing something that, you know, in the realm of high-end gear is probably gonna have uh, introduce more distortion than you're desiring 
and more distortion than you're paying for with all that high-end gear. So the use case of where I recommend this is kind of mid to low end uh, gear that is analog based and can't have access to EQ on a computer. Um, if you're within those circumstances, and this is you know what this is kind of made for, this is a great product, like a super solid, highly, highly, highly recommended product. And it sounds like I'm kind of bashing on it, but I'm more just telling you what I think you should buy this for and all the reasons, you know, and all the scenarios that this really doesn't seem to be the best option. And that may sound kind of negative and it's not meant to be that way because I actually think this is a great product. But again, for specific use cases, you know, just like a lot of other things. So 140 bucks, do I think that this is worth it? Well, I think if you're looking at it from like, you fit the circumstances that you should buy this, and you know you have an analog system where you have something like a TV where you can't have EQ adjustments, uh, this can really be a godsend for a system that is almost perfect or a system that you know you just want maybe a little bit more bass out of. This is something that will, will do that. And as long as your speakers or your headphones or whatever you're driving can keep up with it um, and isn't gonna you know, distort or, or you know, break or something like that, then I think this is highly, highly recommended and it's definitely gonna be kind of a top tier recommendation, but again, circumstances. Okay guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off.